Joining us now, former U.S. Congressman and Agricultural Secretary in the Clinton administration and now candidate in the special election to fill Thad Cochran's U.S. Senate seat, Democrat Mike Espy, who has some supporters in the room here today. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So how's the race? Good planning. How's the race going? Well, can I can I first say hotty toddy? Oh. All right. yeah. You guys, I see a picture of Eli Manning on the wall here. Oh. You guys do realize that my son, Mike Espy, played for Ole Miss for four years before he went to the Washington Redskins. All right. Oh my goodness. He was Eli Manning's uh, uh, perennial wide receiver. He yeah. was the, yep. so so wow. everywhere I go, he asked me how I'm doing. So I pick my spots, you know, wherever I go in some place in Mississippi, I carry Mike with me. He's very popular, so he's going to add 10% to it. All right. Okay, good. Good. Ray, good. Race is going well, though? Race is going well. We're, uh, we're really very, very pleased. Uh, people like George Will, right, right, came, and we actually met at Bure Restaurant, wrote a, wrote a column, and he quoted William Faulkner, and he said that illusions are really just as powerful and just as real as bones are blood. So many people look at Mississippi, you know, a Democrat from Mississippi, African American from Mississippi, that's an illusion. But George Will, quoted William Faulkner, said illusions are just as real as bones and blood. So we're going to create some bones and blood. We're going to get the vote out. We're going to get enough crossover votes to win on November 6th. And failing that, there's a runoff three weeks later. And I've got polling, recent polling by Mark Melman, that shows that we're going to do very, very well on November 6th. But if we don't get that 50% plus one, then we'll move on three weeks later, and we show that we're beating the the temporary incumbent. Right. Uh, so that's, so, so either that's, way, I'll, I'll win. And, and that's what's so interesting. And yes. one of the reasons we're here in Mississippi, there is a possibility as tight as the race is for control of the United States Senate, as it looks yes. you know, seven, eight weeks out, uh, that there's a possibility that if it ends up in a dead heat, and then you have a special election three weeks later, three weeks later whoever wins Mississippi will control the United States Senate. Well, that would be interesting. Uh, right now, right now, all I'm doing, I can't speculate on that. We don't know what's going to happen to other races. Uh, I'm keeping my head down. We're in the bushes. We're getting every vote that we can. Uh, we've got to turn out the African-American vote. This, this race goes through the African-American community, no doubt about that. But we also have to have enough crossover votes uh, to complement that and win. Right. And so we're doing it in every space. Uh, Joe, I, uh, you know, you were in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, too. I don't like to talk about it, but go, uh, <laughs> no, go no, ahead. Think about this. We've been everywhere for the last five. You know, Cochran didn't resign until March. Right. So others have had two years, six years prepared. We've had seven months. Right. So we're doing very, very well hmm. within that seven months because people remember me. Hmm. They remember me as someone, a member of the historic 100th Congress with John Lewis, where Jim Wright was a speaker. And the thing that's different, and I hope that... Um, you know, I hope that my race uh, uh, will show is that things are so dysfunctional and cynical and chaotic and people are just so tired of the reality show that they remember someone like me who came in as a 30 year old, never ran, won a race, never ran a race mm -hmm. and won with a with a 85 uh, percent black vote, <clears throat> but 11 percent white vote in 1986 and in 1992 for re-election, I had 95% black vote and 40% white vote. Mm. So when people remember that I, I did things, right. I responded to people. It wasn't about race, it was about responsiveness. Right. So <clears throat> we did that from 86 to 92. And as you talk about taking on the Trump agenda, Mr. Secretary, as you know, this state went by almost 20 points for Donald Trump in 2016. Yes. So what do you say to Trump supporters who you're hoping to cross over and win their vote? If you're talking about going in and challenging his agenda, they like what he's doing. What do you say to them? I'm not running against Trump. I'm running for the office of U.S. Senator. And I pretty much tell them that I'm a Democrat. I acknowledge that. And I'll caucus with the Democrats. But I'm, I'm an independent, small I independent. I do not care where the idea comes from. It's a good idea that I'm going to promote it. If it comes from the administration and it's, it's well meaning and not ill will, then I'm going to support it. But the reverse is also true. And everyone knows that. I do not care about, uh, about, about gender, about race about religion, about party. I care about getting the job done. So wherever the idea emanates, originates, and it makes sense that I'm going to be there, not proving that, 
1986, 1988, 1990, 1992, and even in the, the USDA. So you'd vote with the president if it were a good idea? If it's a good idea, uh, yeah. You know, not everybody on the side is stupid. Mm -hmm. Not everybody on the other side has ill will. Not everyone on the other side, uh, every, well, everybody has value. But we have value as well. So people remember me from that time. Right. And, uh, and so we're doing that. Eddie. So folks yes. remember you, but we're, we're looking forward. We have to, you know, there's, there's the past, and yes. then there's, there's, the full, there's, the future, there's the future. And the future is really important because it seems like it's in danger. Yes. Now, we saw what happened in Alabama with Doug, Doug Jones, and yes. we saw the turnout. We know particularly black women specifically leading the charge. What are you specifically doing to get the 38 percent of black folk who make up the state of Mississippi to come out and support you? That's important. I'm, I'm not going to leave the idea of what they remember. It's, it's, it's what they remember, but also what I'm promoting right now. Yeah. I was the Secretary of Agriculture, right, which is the mayor of rural America. So every town in Mississippi, uh, it's not every town, but except for three or four, every area uh, is within uh, 30,000 people or fewer. And all of those communities were serviced by USDA. Rural water, rural sewer, rural homes, now I'm saying rural broadband. They all remember, and they remember what I did then and what we're doing now. But also, I've not run in 20 years, but Eddie, I'm the chairman of the board of a $200 million nonprofit, and the Wall Street Journal in May 1st just gave us the national award for the most innovative nonprofit in our, in our sphere, mm. which is going into low-income districts in Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Louisiana and Arkansas and, and building the wealth in those low income communities. We give we give mortgages up to one hundred and ten thousand dollars for Mika and Joe. That's that's a closet. But in Mississippi, <laughs> what are you wow. talking about? Wow. <laughs> so, you got that populist thing. Going. All right. One hundred ten thousand dollars is a pretty good three thousand square foot home. That's in pretty good. That's pretty we, great. Uh, we go to medical unserved areas where without doctors, we build clinics. We go to service stations, uh, we go to areas with service stations where people make groceries because there's no grocery store and build green grocery stores. And then lastly, what we do, we're now going into public schools, building, putting credit unions in public schools, building wealth. And, and, and that's what I'm the chairman of the board of that for the last 14 years. Right. Joyce. By, by the way, I, but first, I, I want to get a shot at Eddie here. I just want everybody to know. You know, we got a cultural exchange program going on here. I'm wearing old Miss gear, and we got my brother brought an Alabama pin for me to wear, and Eddie has slapped it on. Wow. Thank you, Eddie. Wow. How's it feel? Thank you, Eddie. Do you, do you feel the aura of how many national championships we got? Oh, Lord. 17 national championships, oh, Eddie. Do you feel the greatness? Oh, Lord. Uh, okay. <laughs> when, All right, when, Joyce when Eddie runs for office in the state, they'll use that in an attack ad. Yeah, they yeah. will. They will. <laughs> Joyce. So you watched Doug Jones pull off the special election in Alabama. No one expected to see a Democrat win in Alabama. Yes. Does that tell you that there's a powerful movement for change down here, or do you believe that that was just a one-off race? No, I don't think it was a fluke at all. Uh, I've, um, Doug Jones is a friend of mine. We talked to him about his victory, and he talked about issues. You, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in Mississippi, just like Alabama, we have a lot of health issues and health ills. We've got all of these rural hospitals closing because of the lack of uh, uh, Medicaid reimbursements and uncompensated care. So we talk real issues, uh, rural development, promoting health care. We're here at Oxford and Ole Miss. I talk to students that are concerned about their brain drain, mm -hmm. their student debt. They just want to graduate without all of this burdening debt and go to Greece and go to Rome and sow your oats, but come back to Mississippi because there are jobs here. So I've talked to Joe, Doug Jones, hired his senior consultant, Joe Trippi, hired all of his GOTV people, oh, know the women out in the rural area, Latasha Brown, who is, um, right. you know, we, I didn't hire her. She has her own IE and her own, all of that, and we're not supposed to talk about that. But the thing is that she knows what to do. Yeah. We don't have to help her. She's with us. All right. So, by the way, he, he's talking about go to Greece, go, go, to, go to Rome to sell your wild oats and come back to Mississippi. Yeah. Willie and I went to Turkey, well, okay. ended up in prison for 14 years. It was a dark chapter. Oh, oh, it's a dark chapter. Dark chapter in more than not talk about it. Yeah. They made a movie about <laughs> it. We don't want to get into it. Though. Next Great hour, we're going to speak with one of the other candidates in this special election, Republican Chris McDaniel.
Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.